turmoil and so forth. Right across, not just in France, but it was happening in England, in the Caribbean, in the, in the mutiny on the bounty in Tahiti. It's, all, it's happening all at once across the world. Uh, and, and the same um, impulses that were at work at that point, let's t just take, for example, the very first feminist manifesto is written under the Uranus-Pluto alignment, 1792-93, Mary Wollstonecraft. Fast forward to the 1960s, Uranus-Pluto conjunction, and again, you have this burst of feminism and empowerment of women. Same thing with the civil rights movement. 1960s, you have Martin Luther King, you've got Malcolm X, you've got um, Nelson Mandela, and so forth. Tr um, tremendous uh, impulse to liberate uh, to, to transform the social structure and liberate um, African Americans or, or people of color throughout the world. Go back to the, um, the Uranus-Pluto alignment of the French Revolutionary period, and that's when you have the, the emergence of the abolition movements, the first freeing of the slaves uh, by um, the French Revolutionary government frees them in, in, in uh, the French colonies, um, and uh, the basic beginning of a black civil rights movement happens at that point. So that's an example of a diachronic or uh, um, patterning uh, in which the same kind uh, within a particular field, a, a particular area of human activity, in this case feminism and women's suffrage or, uh, and women's rights, or let's say uh, civil rights and abolition movement, you can track that either um, synchronically, all these similar events happening at the same time, or diachronically, the same genre of events happening at different times, but in coincidence with um, a sequence of cyclical alignments of the same planets. If we look at wh what I've just described, uh, are uh, the um, Uranus-Pluto alignment of the French Revolutionary period and the Uranus-Pluto alignment of the 1960s. Well, in, in between, there were two other conjunction, one other conjunction and one other opposition in between. Uh, altogether, we're looking at a period of, of approximately um, 200 years. And uh, in those intermediary uh, alignments, the conjunction took place in the late 1840s and early 1850s. And that's precisely when 1848, across Europe, virtually every capital in Europe, uh, Paris, uh, Rome, um, Prague, uh, Dresden, had a revolution um, almost simultaneously. And, and all the way through the later 1840s and uh, early 50s, you have, again, the abolition movement reached a peak. That's what basically catalyzed the, the Civil War in the United States. That's when um, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote her uh, Uncle Top's Cabin, which had an enormous effect on catalyzing social, the social conscience of the United States. And, John Brown's raid and Lincoln uh, coming into the uh, newly founded Republican Party, uh, which had a different character in those years um, than the present <coughs> uh, version of it. And uh, th th um, you also had Sojourner Truth and uh, Harriet Tubman with her, her uh, great efforts to liberate the slaves from the, from the South. And you had um, the, uh, the great um, former slave Frederick Douglass writing his autobiography. All these had an enormous effect on, on the civil rights and abolition movement of that time. And uh, at the same time, you have 1848, the first women's suffrage convention that takes place in, in uh, New York, upstate New York. Um, you have uh, Susan B. Anthony is there, and uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and uh, Lucy Mott, and so forth. It was. Uh, the real beginning of the of the women's movement that climaxes under the very next conjunction in the 1960s when um, uh, Betty Friedan writes the Feminine Mystique, National Organization of Women is founded, uh, radical feminism emerges in the late 60s, and uh, we're still living out the, uh, the the consequences of that. So, um, and I could point out similar. This is the period of when. Going back to the 1840s uh, conjunction, this is when um, 
David, uh, Henry David Thoreau writes uh, Civil Disobedience and basically sets in motion the um, movement towards nonviolent rebellion, disobedience against established governments that leads to uh, uh, Martin Luther King's great efforts under the next conjunction of the 1960s. So there, uh, one, one could do the same thing in literature, in, um, in music, you've got Wagner, you know, you had Beethoven under the preceding one during the French Revolutionary Epoch. Beethoven is blowing the mind of uh, the uh, Viennese public as he comes in with this, you know, titanically revolutionary piano playing. And then under the very next conjunction, you've got Wagner blowing the mind of the European opera uh, audiences with the power of his music and this kind of Promethean Dionysian, you know, potency that music had never known before. And then under the um, conjunction of the 60s, well, if you have Beethoven at the one point, you've got Jimi Hendrix coming into London and, and you know, completely uh, uh, transforming the, the, the parameters of what music uh, can do. And it's not, of course, just Hendrix. It's the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan doing it with protest music and then electric uh, uh, rock. And you've got, um, you know, The Who and Led Zeppelin and um, Janis Joplin and so forth just completely uh, expanding the, the possi possibilities of what uh, human beings can, can um, express and, and artistically enact. So then you have the opposition in the, uh, basically the late 1890s, um, beginning of the 1900s, 1896 to uh, 1906, approximately that decade. Basically these, um, these big conjunctions and oppositions, we're looking at a, at a 15 degree orb, which is essentially how long a full moon looks to be full. When you look at a full moon, it's basically full from about 15 degrees before exact until 15 after. It's basically two nights that, you, that a moon looks to be full. Same thing with the new moon. It's gone for um, the period of about 15 degrees before and after. And that's empirically what we find if we track carefully the occurrence of events that have a particular archetypal character, they um, take place in coincidence with um, the relevant planetary conjunction or opposition uh, for a period that seems to be most um, emphatically visible from, uh, about, from 15 degrees before into 15 degrees after. And that, in terms of number of years for the Uranus-Pluto alignments, is approximately a dozen years. Again, you have, um, let's just take the uh, uh, technological advances, which uh, is something we only spoke of uh, briefly before. But while in the 60s, you've got tremendous technological advances with you know, computers and rockets and the space program going up to reaching the moon and, and so forth. Let's just take aviation and space jets and, and, uh, and, and the space expeditions of the 1960s, well, if you go back to the preceding opposition, that's when uh, the very first aviation experiments of any kind happen uh, of the, uh, by the Wright brothers um, with the first, uh, first, the first glider experiments in 1900 and then 1903, the first powered flight. Um, uh, and if, you, um, if we were to look at uh, something like um, the uh, women's suffrage movement uh, during that period becomes uh, uh, tremendously empowered uh, in both England and the United States during the late uh, 1890s and early 1900s.